Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Home Studying channel. If today is your first time visiting with us, I want to extend to you a very warm welcome and invite you to watch any of our over 400, not 400, yeah, 440 videos that we've arranged for your convenience in playlists as we are confident you're going to find them both entertaining and useful. If you have been here before and you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Do subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. All right, so what do you think? So I think to accommodate the compass rows, we need to have the, the map come out far enough to give it a nice... So you don't want it in just one? No, I don't want it in just okay. one because that's too tight because then when you start to put in your verbiage there, it's just, there's really not enough room. Okay. To make it look good. So we are thinking of centering there, right? Yeah, so thanks for moving that. Well, we are... This is a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of paper. I've just pulled out extra pieces of paper to give us a good idea of what it looks like. Uh, and I've made it in approximately 18 inch squares. Squares? Squares. How many squares? Squares. 18 inches square. Now it's off because we've moved stuff around, but what? you still get the idea. Um, so this will be on center. Okay. And then we have this stencil we're going to put. But to say it's the journey. Not the destination. Not the destination. We're going to put, okay. it's the journey there mm -hmm. and not the destination here, right? Yeah, and kind of stagger them. And then we'll have a frame around the whole platform. Right. And we can use the same technique we use with our trivet. Yeah, I like that staggered look. Okay. Really we, nice. we, we, we can do that. So, remember you didn't... Alright, friends. So, this is the beginning of our project idea for, for today, and this was Elpida's idea, and we are working together to, to materialize it. As you saw in our starting B-roll, I really like uh, nautical themes, and we were lucky enough to find uh, some really interesting papers. What are these papers used for? What is the design? Scrapbooking. For scrapbooking. And we used it in our project, was it two weeks ago? Um, yeah, a couple of weeks ago for the, the front of the, the cabinet that right. we did. Right, and we really like that. And for that for that project, we only bought a couple of sheets, um, but because we're kind of getting into a map theme, I went ahead and bought this entire cardstock book, which has a whole lot of different types in there. And these four came out of that book, right? Well, yeah, all four of those did. So we are going to, of course, build a substrate, very similar to what we did with the trivet, but larger this time, right? So, now if you don't want to use the maps, you could use just uh, boards, right? Mm -hmm. And leave them, you can still use the stencils to yeah. write on them. We just, you just leave them as they are or whitewash them or do something, Same right? Or whatever finish you want. So there, there are options always in our project. We're kind of into this right now, so we're going to do this. And we're going to use plywood as a substrate. And we're going to, of course, put a border around it. An idea I just thought of was to maybe put some piece of something that would have this out so it gives it a little, little bit of a dimension yeah. as opposed to having With it... With a shadow behind it. Yeah, yeah, as opposed to having it just attached straight so that would give it that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, we, we can see what we find. It gives it depth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a dimensional project instead of... Mm -hmm. And this we, we bought for fairly inexpensive, I don't remember. It was less than $5, but I bought it on a clearance sale last year when we were still in the Midwest. <laughs> so, uh, these things, nautical theme roses, or a compass rose is the correct term for this, mm -hmm. are things that you can find fairly inexpensively in yard sales and flea markets, right? You can. Even buy them on Amazon, this is not an expensive thing. However, the interesting thing is that this attached to something at the core piece would be much more expensive. But just finding the compass rose is not an expensive proposition. The four pieces, because they came out of a big book, they are probably no more than a dollar or two at, at the most, right? So we're doing about maybe five dollars here, the compass rose and this. The plywood we have and the wood that we buy for the frame, I don't remember how much we pay, was it a buck fifty or something? In that range, yeah. So we're doing an under ten dollar 
even conservatively, I have a $10 project. So stick around and we're going to show you step by step as we normally do how we achieve that. Very nice looking lows. No? Alright folks, and we are back from Lowe's, and as you saw, we cut our plywood the dimensions we need, which is 18 by 18. Uh, I mean, that's a personal uh, preference, because this is intended to hang on the wall. That was a good dimension for us. You can have, of course, any dimension you like. And we also bought for the trim, very much like we did in our last project, we bought the same type of wood and the same quantity. All the material we bought for this project come up to just over ten dollars or just under ten dollars? Just under eleven. Just under eleven dollars. So not a very expensive project. And then we visited Walmart because I mean that's what you do. And we bought things that are not intended for what we plan to use them. These are cord ends and we're going to use them as spacers because that's how we roll. And these are little nails and we're going to use them as nails. How about that? That's amazing. I know. I mean, you, you you couldn't have come up with a better solution. No, that's it, the, the nail solution. So right. now we're going to be able to, to start the project. So stick around, and like we always do, we're going to show you a step-by-step -step process on how to finish this project. So now we're cutting strips of the paper to ensure that we have the paper we need to cover the whole surface. And so we have an 18-inch square board and we have a 12 inch square uh, scrap of paper and just so that we have a little bit of an overlap on each side I'm making it three and a half inches so it should come in about a half inch underneath that so that all the pieces will overlap. So contrary to my strong belief again measuring against measuring this is actually something we do have to measure for right? Yes. Or you can eyeball it if you want, I mean, you know. No, 
You certainly can. But since we How precise do you think these measurements need to be? Not super precise, but you definitely, I mean, the look is we're going for is that we're not going to have gaps. So. And of course there you could use the the ruler and use a, a sharp knife and cut it mm -hmm. on the paper. We are going to use a pair of scissors because we have limited supply of tools here. Right. So if I had an exacto knife, I would probably use that better. But Safely though, right? Of course. Because kids, exacto knives can be very dangerous. Well, they can. And don't run with knives or with scissors. For me, you didn't even have to say with the with knives or scissors because I don't run. You don't run? No. Is it a religious objection to running? I mean, what? It's not my thing. Mm, okay. Just saying. All right. So we're going to be back with you and show you the final project as a not the final project, the, the final cutouts as a a dry fit. All right. And here we have a dry fit with all the elements without the border. So the border is the only thing missing. Well, and the stencil. Yeah, and the stencil, right. But we, we knew we were working with just 12 inch square paper, so we knew we were gonna have to cut some pieces to fit, so that's what we've done. This is our middle 12 by 12, uh, and then just have cut some three inch, three and a half inch wide strips to go around the entire border so everything will overlap. And now, we'll be able to glue everything down in place and it'll be flat. So the next step we're going to show you is the mud, hodge, podge, what? Yeah, <laughs> mud podge. So we'll come back uh, as soon as we're getting set up. We're going to do that, let that dry, cut the pieces for the frame, and we'll show you, of course, all the, all, all the steps as we always do. We're going to show you all the steps as we always do. But we might have to cut this first because the glue will be wet and if we try Right, that's what I said. We're going to let that dry and cut that. No, that's not what you said. It's on video. Mod Podge. All right, so we're going to start the Mod Podge process. Again, we're using the same Mod Podge brand that we use uh, in our previous Mod Podge, Mod Podge project. And I think, is that the, the brand or it is? Yep. What's the brand? Or Mod Pads is the style of this thing? No, well, Plaid is the brand. Plaid is the brand, okay. The product is called Mod Podge. Mm -hmm. I think the technique is called Mod Pads too, right? Yep. And that's what I've heard. And the way that works is that you put it on the wood directly, right? Mm -hmm. We also use a, a little um, barrier here not to damage our towel, which we use not to damage our table because we don't have enough on a shop. An option that we have not considered but we just realized might be a, a good option for some people. We're going to do our original plan, but once you make this border with the paper, you could place the, the rose inside and people either stain or white was the middle, right? And that can be a good look as well. We're going to go ahead with our original plan because we think we we'll like that a lot, but one of the good things to discuss here is that a lot of this process is experimentation. There is nothing to say that you do another project very similar, but instead you make a little difference. Especially if you make things like that to sell, you might want to make different variations because different people will like slightly different things. Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. All right, and now we're ready to, to put the middle piece, which is the largest piece. And now you're going to cover the whole area with mud pads, pods? Yes. Why well, want to call it pads instead of pods? I don't know. Same reason I want to call it Suzuki Ban. You call it Sushi Ban is what you call it, not Suzuki. I just called it Suzuki. That's a new one then.
Can you get high out of Mod Podge? You can get high out of any of these chemical fumes if you don't have it vented correctly. Alpida is not someone that enjoys any form of chemical spell, smell. No, I don't enjoy the smell at all. Really. Or the spell. Yeah. It really does not do well for me. Do you need to use like a, a, a card or something to make sure there are no bubbles or? No, I think I can smooth it down. It's just making sure that we're as okay. centered as we can be. As centered as we can be. That's the, the trick, folks. We need to be as centered as we can be. Yes? Yeah. And it is a good time to try and, and smooth the surface, especially if you see any bubbles, air bubbles or anything like that. So are we ready for our next step? We're going to give it a little bit of time to dry, right? Yeah, I'm going to do dry, just right? a little bit around the edges to tack them down. Okay. And then we're going to let it dry. And it is okay to do it on top because that dries completely clear. Yep. So even though you might see a little bit of whiteness now, as Alpida does it, in just a few moments it's going to be completely clear. So don't be concerned about that. All right, folks, as soon as we finish the details, we are going to start cutting the, the, fr the frame. So stick around for more fun. Okay, so we've got our 18 inch square uh, flat piece of plywood. We bought these square dowels. They are in 36 inch lengths and if they are measured correctly then we will get two 18 inch pieces out of this single one which will be the top and bottom of our frame. So I've paired this up and now I've taken my fine pencil and marked where the edge is. The other side is flush. We're going to take the miter box and cut here. And again, hopefully we'll have two exactly the same pieces, so we only have a single cut for two pieces. Maybe not though, because there is a carrot from the saw. Well, that's what I'm saying. We'll see. If not, then we've got a link for one of the other sides. Hey, I made you a space over here. Hey, it's for horses. your blade there. I think that's right on the line, isn't it? Yeah. That was good. So check and see if it is correct, which we hope it is. This one actually has a little bit of an overhang, but... Well, we cut right on the line, so maybe it is a little long, I don't know. So that's what I'm saying, maybe it's... Yeah, it was a little bit long, because this one is perfect. So we'll have to... So that one can be shaved just a little bit, maybe. All right, put them next to each other and see if something we can do or not. It's like, what, an eighth of an inch? Maybe a little, between an eighth and a quarter. Mm -hmm. But you're sure that the short one is the good, because we don't have extra. So let's double, triple check that... This one is good. It's exactly. All right. And then this one is the longer one. And that's why we use the the thin. Uh, what do you call it? The thin. Uh, now we're not going to show them all of that again. What we usually do is we're going to push it now to touch the, the saw blade. You might want to do this end. Yeah. Because yeah. of the color. Oh. You so what, what we do now is we notice that there is a coloration in one of the pieces and since we're going to cut a, a smidge off, you tell me when you're ready. I know, I'm just, does that seem flush to you? Yeah. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. You might want to put your hands here. Please. It's safe. Okay. And we have a cute little piece. Look at this. And it's green. Like a button. Cute as a button. Are they the same length now? Yep. Alright, we're not going to show you sewing all pieces, but we will show you the thought process that goes behind each successive piece, and right? You can also post a link. 
the last project that right. we did with the trivet, which has the similar technique. Which is going to be there. Do you see my finger? It's not even my middle finger, you know what I mean? Um, this is a very PG-13. Okay, okay, so to get the first piece of the side frame, we have placed the two 18-inch pieces at the top and the bottom. We're lining this piece up here with this edge, and then lining the other one up with the other. And then I have used the pencil to mark the inside here. And that will be the length that we need for this side piece, and then also for the other side piece. Those will be equal lengths. And we're going to cut it and we'll be right back with you. And here we're on our last piece. The process is of course the same. Ready? Mm -hmm. Excellent getting ready for the staining process because we have the paper already on the base we don't want to stain the pieces on the base because of course that it will be impossible for us not to damage the paper right and we're doing a little bit of uh, sanding to eliminate any rough edges but can we tell our viewers exactly how we do the corners and how we fit them either of you yes yeah so again, the bottom and the top pieces were the longest. Then we fit in the side pieces in between the top and the bottom. Then we kept the next piece allowing for the side pieces so it came in that much. And then the same thing for the other side pieces. And of course, if you don't like this look, you can fortify it, right? You can do miters. Yeah, you can definitely do miters. I just like this stacked look. We like this and we don't really have a good way to do miters here, right? All right. So it is a dual, a dual thing. So we're going to finish the sanding and we're going to start the staining and we'll, we'll be with you temporarily. Momentarily. Momentarily, not temporarily. Well, both momentarily and temporarily, right? Mm -hmm. We're not going to stay with them forever. Right. So stick around, folks. We appreciate right, your support. Folks. And we are ready to start staining. And one detail we want to tell you is that we need to stain, can you point the sides? You need to stain only the two sides of each of the frame pieces because the other two sides need to accept glue, right? Mm -hmm. And also you don't need to stain the areas that will connect there because they need glue as well. So anything that will touch other pieces of glue does not need to be stained. And in this exercise, it helps having the pieces assembled like that so we know what we're going to stain. So you're saying basically don't stain the end, don't right. stain this half inch where they're going to meet up. Right. Anything that glue touches glue should not be stained. Okay. I mean a little bit of stain will not kill it but the glue does not adhere to stained areas. So we're not going to show you all the staining process but we're going to show you a little bit. And I guess as much as I'm not a big fan of stain it's always very satisfactory and I don't know what the right word is but just seeing how the wood changes by a simple process of wiping on stain always amazes me right yeah the right stain can definitely make or break your project I think. and I hope you guys appreciate our kitchen workshop maybe that will be the new channel the kitchen workshop kitchen wood shop there you go KW kitchen workshop. So we're going to finish the staining process and we're going to get right back with you. So we're finished staining every piece and this is the time that we have to wait, right? Mm -hmm. And we hope it's going to be dry within what do you think, 30 or 40 minutes? Yeah, probably 30 minutes or so. At least dry enough for us to do the next step if nothing else. Yeah. And uh, so we might grab a little bit of dinner or something? What do you think? Yeah, I hope so. And we will be right back with you, folks. So enjoy your dinner if you're having dinner or your breakfast if this is morning for you or whatever you might do while your stain dries. Yes? Yes. Now, always let your, let your stain dry, though. It's a very important thing to do. Well, yes. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. You don't want wet stain. Wet stain is bad. No, because it'll get everywhere. But one of the things we want to point out is, as you can see, 
even without SOP, we are starting doing a little more evolved projects. Mm -hmm. And one of the easy ways, I don't know about your area, but they don't charge us to cut wood here. Yeah. Neither of the two big uh, store, big box, store. big box stores. So if you don't have a saw, definitely you can ask at least the big pieces, right? Yeah. And if we had, if we're in our shop, even these pieces would be cheaper because you can just strip them yourself instead of buying them already ripped. But definitely while it increased, not drastically though, right? I mean, it is a little more expensive, but definitely doable. So watching paint dry or stain dry is not very exciting. So we're going to leave you and we're going to be back shortly with a continuation of the project. Right, then we didn't find exactly what we're looking in the store. So we need to remove this top, uh, what you will call it, eye. And we're going to use our Dremel for that. Very exciting, isn't it? Okay. Tell me when you start. So, so <clears throat> we're starting the stencil process right now, and we have a known dimension of one inch in our square, and we use it to get an approximation of where we want the distance to be, remember we're going to have about an inch of a border, so we don't want our lettering to be covered by the border, correct? Correct. Excellent, excellent. And as they say, here goes nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what they say? Somebody does. We don't? So do we need to clean that if we were to use it again or not? The stencil? Yeah. Actually after the paint dries, I think it's fine. We wipe off as much as we can. I think you need more under there. I guess it is a little rusty, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Yeah, that's okay. what I was thinking is that it's going to be okay. As long as it's dark enough to see against the pattern. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's see. You want it? Because it's plastic, it wipes off fairly easily. Yeah. And this is craft paint as opposed to like. Do you have any underneath though? Before you're done? Yes. Okay. Huh? Nope. Okay. Did 
Do you want it a little further over? This one is still going to have to come over a little bit. Mm -hmm. So maybe just down as opposed to over. What do you think? Because that's the one inch border. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this will be the one inch border there. And this will just be standard by like an inch. Okay. It'll be really close to the, mm -hmm. but I think that'll be fine. Okay. I like that placement. Mm -hmm. And again, the same methods can be used for different themes. We are doing a, a nautical theme here. But of course you don't have to do a nautical theme and you can choose a variety. Where did we find the bunch of stencils we found? Um, these were all a Hobby Lobby deal. Right, so probably any craft store? Yeah, Michael's has some Hobby Lobby, whatever you find, Joanne, if there's one around you. Spot there, but in actuality, it is a space actually in the right. It's stencil. cursive, right? Yeah, in the stencil. So I didn't miss a spot, it's just the stencil. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to see with the black. Um, I think it was a good choice. Yeah, don't, wor don't worry about that. Okay, all right, so. And hold it for 20 seconds. So we're using CA glue and an accelerant to attach little posts on the compass rose, right? Now you can go flat if you want. What? The other three. Oh. You can go flat if you want, but we decided we would like it to be a little uh, raised up from the project to give it some dimension. Dimension or dimension. 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 Depending on what you've had with dinner. Right. And again, we're using uh, rope ends here instead of what we should have been using or what they're These called. They're intended for rope. These are intended for a bracelet. Rope hooks, what they're called. I don't know. It's a jewelry making finding that we're making work for our purposes. And if this doesn't work, we're going to go to plan B. And if that doesn't work, let's turn it around though, so we won't be that close to the coffee maker. The hazards of doing wood, of doing well, the construction not, in the kitchen. It is not even woodworking, you know. What is this, metalworking? No, but you and your very, oh. very red stinky chemical stuff. And again, this is CA glue we're using. You could use other types of uh, adhesives. Primarily we're using this glue because we want to be able to finish the product to show it to you. You could use other adhesives that might take the whole night to, to cure. This probably would be good for contact cement, thinking about it, right? Because you don't move it much after you put it there. Well, hopefully after you have put it there, you're not moving it at all. <laughs> it is really stinky. I know.
Okay. And here is our stenciling in the two corners. Hold it. Oh, come on. Okay. What if we use one no, of the... Let's... Yeah, but did it move or no? Okay, I think it's all right. All right, and what we're doing is we're tacking the frame. Not the easiest thing to do. Okay. And we're going to do that in all four corners. I mean, if you want, we can type them this way, the, the sideways. This is where a staple gun, gun is invaluable, right? Mm -hmm. And we're using the square to try to make sure that everything it is square. Is square. Because I don't want to be killed, I'm trying to make it so we don't hit the table. Come on, baby, you can do it. That needs to be tapped a little bit. Did it come off that direction? It's not tight. Mm, it's moving. I'm not sure it's going to get any better. Well, we can tap it even after we do all of them actually. Because this doesn't affect the other join at all. Okay. We can still tap it if you want. All right, so we're going to follow this process until we finish. Let's put it on a hard surface and do it when we're done. All right, because we want to avoid having any uh, or many nail uh, holes sewing on the front, on the front face, we decided we are going to tack it from the back because we don't care about the back holes, right? So in order to achieve that, we had to assemble the frame first Sorry, and we did. Okay. We did it on the corners here. And we used just very limited brad nails. And then, in order to keep this tight, we used the brad in the middle. In the middle of its, I don't know if you can see it there or not. It's barely visible. And and that's how we assemble it. And now we're going to get it ready to put the plywood with the paper on. So we'll be right back with you frame upside down it is on top with our paper facing of course down right now and we're using very small brass we are attaching it to okay And the last thing to do is the uh, rose. Let's put the rose at, so just without the glue yet. And this is the last dry fit. You might be going getting the glue from there. What kind of glue? Just the... The CA glue. Okay. So now we picked our compass with the four studs that will elevate it slightly, slightly from our picture. And making sure that north looks up, we're putting it here 
and you can see it casts a very nice shadow. Do you see it in the camera? Mm -hmm. And it's clearly elevated while you cannot really see the stars, which is the look we're going for. You think would he, we would have gone taller or? No, I think that's the perfect height, actually. Yeah, right. you don't want it to be taller than the frame, I think. Right. So let us uh, glue it to the paper and we are going to get back with you shortly after. Well, we learned a lot from this little build. And one of the things we learned is that having the lumber, the most precise cuts we need cut at the store, cost us nothing and it's really a good solution if you don't have a way to make precise cuts in your saw, correct? Uh, we have not done it before we came here, of course because we had the saws in our saw, but frankly it's so easy and fun to even watch, I was very envious of that saw, that it is a great solution if you want to build and you don't have a table saw or any other of precision making saw. Um, the only last thing we'll need to do to this is put a, a hook in the back so we can hang it in a wall. Mm -hmm. Of course you can change the colors of this, you can use your imagination, you can have your approach. And you can change it for um, your hobbies. For example, this can be replaced with a metal bicycle or a metal car or garage woodworker, maybe a saw and you know, all kinds of things can happen and use the appropriate. Alright friends, that brings us to the end of this episode and here is our finished product. And it's pretty much what we were hoping it would be, right? Thank you. Yeah. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Urban Homesteading Channel and this fine project. If you did, please smash that like button. If you didn't, there is a very nasty rumor that the other button works as well. Share, like, subscribe, and let us know what you would like to see in the future in our channel. From Grand Woodworker, Miss Woodworker, and Pida and the Urban Homesteading Channel, we bid you a great week and we're going to see you soon. Farewell, friends.